Hey, ornament girls and guys. Today, we're gonna to be making these adorable Christmas reindeer ornaments. You know exactly who they are. Before we start, I do need to give a shout out to one of our Ornament Girls Club members, Danielle. Danielle is who came up with this amazing idea. She was kind enough to share it with our community and she gave me permission to teach you guys how to make it yourself. You guys, these might be my favorite ornaments that I have ever made, honestly, and I've made thousands and thousands of ornaments. <laughs> these are so cute. I hope you love them as much as we do. So let's talk about what you'll need. We've got lots of ideas for embellishing these guys. So we actually made you a supply sheet. This is gonna list off not only what you're gonna see me use here in this video, but also extra ideas giving you more options for things. So various ideas for their noses, antlers, and things like that. And by the way, if you're looking at this on your computer, a lot of these items are actually clickable links. So it'll take you directly to where you can find these things. You will need some pre-cut fabric. We've got two by four inch rectangles in two different colors, a lighter and a darker brown, and then also two by three inch rectangles in the same two colors. You'll also need a long strip in the darker color. This is two inches wide by about 10 and a half inches long. These are the colors that I'm using for the deer and I used a lighter set of fabrics for the dough. But all the fabric cuts and amounts are the same. And guess what? That is here on the supply list as well. And just like with most of our ornaments, you're gonna need lots of pins and a three inch foam ball. This one's been marked into eight equal segments. If you don't have a pre-marked ball like this one, not to worry, it's really easy to mark your own. And I'll put a link to another video right below that'll show you how to do that. And you'll need a tape measure and scissors. You guys, I almost forgot. We also made you some planning sheets and you can find a link to these right below. So we're gonna start with the darker color and one of the longer rectangles. So this is two inches by four inches. We're gonna flip it over so the pattern side's facing away and then fold down the top edge a small amount and you don't have to be exact about this, but I have folded down like maybe a half of an inch or so. Okay, and then we're gonna fold it in half the other direction lengthwise and finger press the fold and this is just to find the center. Go ahead and unfold that and we're gonna take a pin and pin right there at that center crease and just a hair below the top folded edge, like that. And now we're gonna grab the foam ball and where all of the lines converge on each half of the ball, we call those the poles, we're gonna start on one of those two poles and press this right into that center pole. It is also going to align with a line going vertically and a line going horizontally across. And here's what I mean. When you press it flat down, you'll see that your folded edge sits lined up with one of those eight lines. Okay, just like that. And it's also gonna be having this line going vertically straight up and down through it. Okay, we're gonna take the left side of this and fold it straight down, forming half of a triangle. Then we're gonna take the right side and fold it down, forming the other half of the triangle. But this right side's gonna just barely overlap the left side, just a teeny tiny bit, and just enough so that we can form one line down the center and then one pin will be able to hold down both halves. But before you go ahead and pin this down, we're gonna first double check that that line that we created in the center is in line with that vertical line running right through it. And you can also check underneath, it's the same line coming down out the other side. Just make sure your line is lined up with that. And then once it is, go ahead and take a pin and press right down there in the bottom center to hold both halves in place. Okay, then we're gonna fold down, or I'm sorry, smooth down the left and right sides. And pin those down as well. So we've got a triangle and its center line is aligning right along one of those lines on the foam ball. Let's go ahead now and switch colors. We're gonna switch to that lighter color, but we're sticking with the same size rectangle, the longer two by four inch rectangle. Same exact prep, we're gonna flip it over so the pattern side's faced away and then fold over that top edge about half of an inch or so and then fold it in half the other way to find the center. Unfold and then right where that crease is is where our pin is going to go and it's going to go right below that top folded edge Just a hair below it So this time we're going to come directly opposite the first one I've got this flipped over now and I'm going to pin this right there at the tip of the first triangle It's not going to be piercing it, but it is going to be touching it that way when we press this flat down We'll have no gap between the two pieces of fabric 
In fact, there's even going to be a little bit of an overlap of this fabric over top of the very tippy top of this triangle. We're going to create a triangle the same exact way, folding down the left side and then the right side. And then making sure that our line going down the center is in line with that same line. And you'll see now that both of the lines down the center of our triangles align with each other. This is how we keep everything really nice and straight in these ornaments. Using these lines on the foam really helps. Okay, and then I pinned at the bottom center, and now I'm gonna pin the two sides. That's the first two pieces of this layer, and we've only got two more to go, and we're actually gonna be sticking with that same color and the same size. And we're just gonna do the same thing to fill in the two remaining open spaces. So this is gonna go right up here in the middle between those first two. And again, I'm letting my pin touch those two points, but I'm not piercing them. Making sure this line's aligned with the opposing line now. When you go to pin down these outer corners, you'll notice that they are overlapping the outer corners of those first two triangles, and that is totally fine. And that's it for layer one. So for layer two, we're actually gonna be switching now to the shorter rectangles, um, the two by three inch size. And I'm gonna start with the darker brown. We're gonna prep it the exact same way, even though it's a little bit smaller. So fabric pattern side is faced away and you're folding over that top edge just a little bit and then folding it in half the other direction and then pinning a hair below that top folded edge. This time we're going to be measuring from the very center point where all of the first layer of triangles all converge in the center. We're going to be measuring from that point by an inch and a quarter and we're going to begin over the dark brown triangle from layer one. And I'm just going to start my tape measure right there at that center point and then measure right along the center line of the dark brown triangle to one and a quarter inches. And that's where I'm going to pin this piece of fabric. Pressing it flat down as usual. And now I'm gonna create the exact same triangle. Folding down the left side and then the right side. Again, just looking at that line from below, I wanna keep all of my lines lined up. And now we'll go ahead and pin down those outer corners. So we have this. Now we're gonna repeat that to do three more triangles on top of these lighter brown triangles from layer one, and we're gonna to switch to the lighter brown two inch by three inch rectangles. Same exact prep. And let's do that here and here with the same fabric. Okay, so we've covered the first four triangles with four more smaller triangles. And now we're gonna put a final four triangles in between of the four that we just did. The two up here, which are adjacent to the dark brown, are gonna be dark brown as well. And then the two down here are gonna be light brown. I'll start with the dark brown up on the top. The distance from the center here is gonna be the same, one and a quarter inches. Just check your lines.
Okay, there's the first two. We've just got two more to go, and these are going to be the lighter brown. And that's it for the face of the reindeer. We're gonna cover the back of the ornament the exact same way, exact same pattern, except that we're gonna be using entirely the dark brown fabric. So first layer back here is four of the dark brown two by four inch rectangles. I want to stop and point out here that in this last layer of the second side, your fabric is going to begin to overlap into the fabric of side one. That is totally okay. We can always trim it. Just make sure your pins don't overlap into side one. So here's the face and you can see that my fabric down here on this first triangle is overlapping into the face, but I'm keeping my pins up along the center line between the two halves so that I will easily be able to trim this off after I'm done this layer. I do still have four more to go here, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim the bottoms of this first set of triangles first.
So now we've got one line of raw edges and pins dividing the two halves. And this is where we're gonna need that long strip, the two inch by about 10 and a half inches long strip of the darker fabric. We're gonna hold this with the pattern side faced away. And then lengthwise, fold in one side about a third of the way or so. You do not have to be exact about this. And we can adjust later to make it wider or more narrow as needed. But start here and then fold in the opposite side to just cover that side. And you'll have a band, you'll be starting to create a band with a raw edge down one side, but if you flip it over, there are no raw edges showing. So let's flip it over, holding that in place, and then we're gonna start this at the top of his face, which of course is gonna be on the, if you're looking at the face side, it's gonna be the dark brown triangle faced up. This is gonna be our top. And I'm gonna lay this with the raw edge side faced down, and then go ahead and stick a couple of pins up here to hold it. So you've got this. And then we're just going to take this and continue folding it into a band and then wrapping it around the ball to cover all of those raw edges and pins. If you find that your pins and raw edges are too wide and your band is not covering them, you can always unfold this band and make it a little bit wider by folding in the edges just a little bit less. but bring it right back around to your starting point. I've just re reached my starting point. I'm gonna go ahead and take another couple of pins here to hold this in place. So you have that, and if you've got any excess here, you can go ahead and lop it off, and that's it for fabric. And now the fun part, we get to turn it into a reindeer. So for his eyes, I use these little vinyl stickies. I got these on Etsy and I did put a link to these in that printable supply list. They have a few variations. I actually ended up preferring the eyelash variation for the reindeer, so that's what I'm gonna do here. And these are like rub-on transfers, but I actually had a hard time with that. They just didn't wanna come off of there onto this fabric, so I just unstuck them from the paper and stuck them right on. And then just use your nail to really press that on and then get any goop off of there that might be kind of showing from the transfer paper. That's so cute. And by the way, for the dough, we use these little flat back scrapbook embellishments. They came in a package like this and I ended up using the largest size. And these are just glued in place. And just like everything else we're gonna talk about, there is a link to these in the supply list as well. I also gave her some fake eyelashes. I did have to cut these down quite a bit because they were way too big. I believe I cut them down to under a half inch. And these were already a little bit sticky on the edge and so I was able to just wrap them right around the top of her eyes and they stuck right on. And then last but not least for her, I also added these little teeny rhinestones right above her eyelashes. So we found a couple of really cute options for the red nose on the reindeer. We've got these little red velvet beads. Now the hole's a little bit large in those, so a red sequin on a pin, and then just stick that right on through the bead, and then you could pop that right into the middle for his nose. That's adorable. And then another adorable option are these red crystal flower beads. These are a little bit more expensive, but super cute. You could also use a round crystal bead. And if the end of the silver pin showing here bothers you, you could always paint that. You could use red paint, red nail polish, or even a Sharpie. All of these nose options are on the principal supply list. And by the way, for the dough, we've got a little bit of a smaller velvet bead in brown. Other ideas are crystal beads. And we also found that these little teeny wooden hearts made an adorable nose for her. Let's go ahead and make the topper, and I'm gonna start with a hanger. I've got about 10 inches of red metallic string. I'm just gonna tie a knot in the ends, forming a loop, and then I've got a tiny red bead. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that onto a pin, and then I'm gonna pin this right through that knot. Let me set that aside for just one second. I also know I want to add a little jingle bell to the top of my reindeer. So I've got one of our Ornament Girl charm chains. It has a little lobster claw clasp at the end, and I'm just going to use that to stick on a red jingle bell. And then I'll take my 
hanger pin and put that through one of the loops on this, depending on how low you want this to hang. So I'm actually gonna probably come down like two or three of the rings on this chain, pin that right through. And then this is gonna go right on top where my band began and ended. And I'm not worried about my extra loops up here because they're gonna get covered up soon by my other stuff that I've got to go up here. Let's talk about antlers. So we're gonna use these puffy glittery antlers, but they're kind of just a little bit too big. So I'm gonna cut them down a little bit, right about there. And I'm gonna use the top part. These are really nice because you can actually use a pin and stick it down in through the back Try not to come through the front, but come through the foam that's in the middle, like that. And then just push it down and you've made yourself a little stick-on antler. You can just pop it on like this. And here is another option for antlers. This is actually a little paper cupcake topper. We just unstuck them from their sticks, glued two of them back to back so you don't have an unfinished side showing, and then stuck a pin right down through the center of both of those glued together halves to hold it in place. Last but not least, to kind of hide the messiness up here and then just finish this off, I used some little sprigs of mistletoe. I cut these off of a larger branch that I got from Michael's. To make this come out the way I wanted, I really had to cut down a bunch of tiny pieces off of here and then just sort of arrange them around the top of his head. Pretend I'm not using my fabric scissors for this. And I use beaded pens to hold these on. You could also probably just use hot glue. And that is it, you guys. Is this not the cutest ornament that you've ever seen? I hope that you love it as much as we do. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below and we will help you out the best that we can. Don't forget all these supplies that we used here and even more options than what we showed here are available on that printable supply list. Thank you so much for watching and happy ornamenting.